Federal government is poised to reopen this morning after a funding fight on Capitol Hill led to another government shutdown. The House just passed a budget bill by a vote of 240 to 186. It came about three hours after the U.S. Senate passed the legislation overnight with bipartisan support. That bill now heads to the president's desk for his signature. Let's bring in right now NBC News, Capitol Hill correspondent and host of KCDC on MSNBC, Casey Hunt. Casey, um, a busy night. The government uh, shuts down. The shutdown we think is going to be averted, but then it actually does shut down for a couple of hours. Very confusing, but I would guess one of the least popular people on Capitol Hill was the one that told the truth <laughs> last night about our fiscal woes, and that would be Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Get us up to date. Yeah, Joe, yeah, he very unpopular among uh, the folks here, and, and I talked to R to Rand Paul just after he went uh, to the Senate floor to make these initial objections, and he just he said, "Look, everybody, they might want to go on vacation, and they're going to be really ornery when we do this uh, at one or two in the morning, but that's what's going to happen." And lo and behold, it is what transpired, and he did make this argument uh, that uh, you know it's, it's quite frankly. Uh, Honest in a in a way that that some others are are not willing to uh, to go, and he essentially said, "Look, I go home. I still go home and complain about these Obama deficits, and I'm going to sit here and vote for a bill that essentially does the same thing." Take a look at a little bit of what he had to say. I can't, in all good honesty and all good faith, just look the other way because my party is now complicit in the deficits. But really, who's to blame? Both parties. We have a 700-page bill that no one has read that was printed at midnight. No one will read this bill. Nothing will be reformed. The waste will continue, and government will keep taking your money irresponsibly and adding to a $20 trillion debt. So two quick things here, Joe. First of all, I think Paul Ryan made a slightly different argument here uh, than Rand Paul, and he said he acknowledged that this was spending that Republicans maybe didn't go along with, but it was the deal that they had to cut to get the funding for the military. That was how this sequester was set up all the way along. And Ryan also said, hey, we need money uh, for opioid funding. And he pointed to the fact that the real deficit issue is entitlements, and that's what Congress needs to tackle. And there's a lot of truth to that. At the end of the day, this isn't a ton of money when stacked up against our entitlement spending. But the other thing that I think is flying under the radar here that's important and going to be important in the long term is that there were a lot of divisions among House Democrats on this. This really exposed the rifts inside the Democratic Party. At the end of the day, there were enough Democratic votes to get this across the finish line in the House. But Nancy Pelosi uh, was really, in some ways, out over her skis. She put this, she did this long eight-hour speech on the floor protesting this bill over DACA. And it really led to some last-minute drama uh, that raised questions about whether or not they could get on board with a deal that she had actually negotiated. So I think I think that dynamic is going to drive a lot of our conversations going forward. All right, Casey, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.